Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I want to talk about emotions because, well, who doesn't deal with emotions, right? I mean, especially as entrepreneurs, uh, one of the things that we experience the most are emotional roller coasters. Like in a single day, you can be up and down and up and down like all over the place. But then beyond just like business emotions where you have the highs and lows, you've got regular emotions of life where you're angry about something or you're frustrated at your, maybe your kids um, get onto your skin or something or, or a heartbreak or, you know, betrayed you feel all these different emotions right and emotions are very real they're very part of life there's sadness and there's happiness and joy and there's all these different things that we feel it's all part of our experience and emotions are also extremely dangerous because they can cause us to act in ways we normally wouldn't ways outside of our typical character so emotions are this funny thing and some people are naturally more prone to respond and re or react impulsively and then apologize later. It wasn't me. I'm sorry. I over, you know, I overreacted, right? I'm sure we've all done that at some point, but some people are more prone to it than others. And then there are other of, others of us that are very um, in control of emotions. So how do you get there? How do you get in control of your emotions? Because emotions are going to strike at some point if they haven't already and sometimes on a regular basis. So this is what I've learned for, through study and through experience that it's all about the pause. It's all about the pause. Now what do I mean by that? Let me unpack that for you just a little bit. When you have an emotional, uh, something triggers you, let's call it a trigger. When you have a trigger and it sets off some kind of an emotion inside you, Okay, that is normal. That's human beings reacting inside. Um, the space between that reaction, that trigger, and your reaction is what I'm referring to as the pause. Okay, that's the critical part. Because when we give ourselves a little bit of pause, a little bit of breathing room, we can, number one, identify the emotion, look at it, observe it, Number two, we can figure out where it's coming from. Number three, we have a little bit of more time to figure out how important it is. Is this really, should I really be responding this way? Am I overreacting? What should I do in response? Now, notice I said the word response instead of react. React is impulsive, boom, emotion, a trigger, a reaction comes right away. A response is a little more carefully orchestrated. So when you respond to something, you've had a chance to review your options, you've considered different angles, and then you respond. And when you learn to cushion yourself with that pause, then you can respond instead of react when situations happen. Does that make sense? So that's the thing with emotions is you've got to build in a little cushion for yourself. Because when you do, you get a chance to think clearly and you get to respond the inside of your character in doing something consistent with your values, consistent with who you are, and instead of being someone else, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde flying off the, the handle, uh, so to speak. So I hope that helps. Uh, when you go through life and you experience emotions and you have things that happen to you, um, envision in your mind a giant pause button. Now, this is kind of hokey, but it's just a suggestion. Because if we can develop the habit of pressing pause, nothing is so urgent you have to respond right away or react right away. You don't have to. Unless you're like falling off a cliff or something. I don't know. There might be rare instances. But most cases, even if you take 20 seconds, I mean, that can be an eternity if you're in the middle of a conversation and you're pausing, right? A pause is just a beautiful thing. So imagine something happens, imagine a pause button. Press down on the pause button with your thumb in your mind and then take a look. And here's my final bit of advice and that is to go third party. Go third party. Okay, what does that mean, right? Well, I'll tell you since you asked. Go third party means to step outside of yourself and handle it from a third party point of view, which is very interesting because 
When you're in your own world, you're clouded because you see everything through your lens, your filter. It's what, it's your beliefs and your values, right? And so if I'm looking through pink lenses, everything I look at is pink. And the guy sitting next to me could have green lenses on and I could be sitting here telling him, hey, the world is pink. And he could look back at me and say, what are you nuts? The world is green, what are you talking about? No, 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 it's pink. I'm like, look at that car is pink, the sky is pink, the ground is pink. He's like, no, it's not, it's all green. I don't even know what you're, well, they're both true, right? The guy with the green lens is speaking truth, his truth. And I, from a, from a lens, uh, having a pink lens, am speaking truth, my truth. They're both true and that's what causes arguments is because everybody's truth is a little bit different. And yet we fail to step outside of ourselves and look at things from what could be their perspective and consider, well, why are they saying that? Why is this person saying it? So if somebody sets you off, there might be a reason why they're doing that. But yet, if we don't step outside of ourselves and consider that they're looking through life with a different set of lenses than we are, and it's not that they're out trying to hurt us or harm us. Most people are good by nature. They mean well. They just go about it in a different way than you would. So it doesn't mean that they're trying to hurt you. It just means that's their methodology. And you don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. In fact, that's what makes the world great is that we're all different. But stepping outside of yourself just a little bit and going third party, that's what I mean by go third party, is, um, is take that third perspective, not your perspective, because your perspective is your perspective. You've always had that and you always know what it is. But consider the root of what's going on and you're much less likely to be offended when you understand this person isn't trying to hurt me. This person's just stating things from his perspective. Now I know how to handle it because I want to understand why and what he's saying and what he's doing and um, there actually might be something I could learn from it. Open your mind, right? You can actually benefit from learning something new understanding his perspective, life through the green lenses, not the pink ones. Anyways, so those are a few tips on handling emotions. Once you get those down and once you start pressing the pause button, build in that cushion, look at things from the other perspective and figure out, consider why they would say something and is it truly hurtful or why something happened a certain way and, and how, um, you know, it may not even be a person. It might just be circumstances that set us off. It could be any number of things. But with that pause cushion, and by taking a third person point of view, you can really step back, look at the bigger picture of things. You can understand what's going on and you can choose to respond rather than react. Now that doesn't mean you're still not gonna be angry. Maybe the, the response is anger, but at least you'll be in control when you make that decision. So there you go. Food for thought. I hope that helps. Respond, share, like, do what you got to do. I'm glad you're here and I'd love to hear what you think on the subject of handling your emotions. So check back later.